Hello, I'm Mrs Martin and in today's lesson we're going to be learning about equal and unequal groups. I've got some pencils and we're going to start by looking at what happens to the pencils. Have a look at the screen. What happened to the pencils? The pencils have been grouped. They've been moved onto the plates and they have been put into groups. Can you see the groups? Of pencils on the plates. I have got some apples. Watch what happens to the apples. The apples have been grouped. The apples have moved onto the plates and they have been grouped. Can you see the groups on each of the plates? Last lesson, Mrs. Power asked you to bring along a few plates and some identical objects. You might have some pasta, maybe a few bricks, maybe some pencils, maybe some cutlery. Um, it doesn't matter what you've got, so long as they are identical. Um, if you haven't got them now, I'd like you to press pause on the video and go and get um, three plates and some identical objects, please. Have you got your objects ready? Super, let's have a little go at this together. I've got my plates and I've got my objects. For my first try, I've got some little teaspoons here. So I have some teaspoons. Watch what happens to my teaspoons. The teaspoons have been grouped. Can you see my groups of teaspoons on the plates? Excellent. Let me try with something else. I have got some pipe cleaners that I have uh, pinched from my daughter's uh, little craft cupboard. I've got some pipe cleaners here. Watch what happens to the pipe cleaners. The pipe cleaners have been grouped. Can you see the groups of pipe cleaners on each plate? Let's do one more with something else. I have got some oranges. Can you see my oranges? Watch what happens to my oranges. The oranges have been grouped. See my groups of oranges on each plate. Fantastic. Now it's your turn to try with your plates and your identical objects. When you do it, have a go at saying the sentences as you do it. You'll say, there are some, you might have bricks. There are some bricks, the bricks have been grouped. There are some, maybe chocolates, the chocolates have been grouped. Have a little go now for me. Press pause on the video, thanks. Here are some footballs. I can group them without moving them. I can draw around them. Let me have a go now. have been grouped. Here are some stars and again I can group them without moving them. I can draw around them. Let's have a go. The stars have been grouped. Let's have a go now grouping our objects by drawing around them. Press pause on the video and get your objects in front of you. I have some spoons. The spoons have been grouped. Let me try with something else. I have some pipe cleaners. The pipe 
pipe cleaners have been grouped. Now, I could actually do that in another way. It doesn't matter how I group them. You move these pipe cleaners to one side. And get some mic for the one. I can group them in different ways. So your groups might look different to mine and that is perfectly okay. Off here to the table. I have some pipe cleaners. They have been grouped. Let me try with one more object. I have some oranges. The oranges have been grouped. It's your turn now. Have a little go at grouping your objects by drawing around them. I hope you enjoyed grouping your objects by drawing around them. Just move them to one side for me, please. Thanks. Max and Lucia have some apples and each of them has put their apples into two groups. What do you notice about Max's and Lucia's apples? What's the same and what's different? Press pause on the video and have a little think. What did you notice about Max's apples and Lucia's apples? They both have two groups of apples. That's the same. Did you notice anything else? Let's look at Max's apples. What do you notice about Max's apples? Does Max have the same or different number of apples in each of his groups? That's right, he has the same number of apples in each of his groups. And I can see that without counting, I can see that how their apples are lined up, that they match so I don't need to count how many apples are in each group. I can see that there are the same number of apples in each group. Does Lucia have the same number of apples in each of her groups? She doesn't, does she? And I can see that because of how they're lined up. Again, I don't need to count it. I can see that Lucia has a different number of apples in each of her groups. She's got more apples in one of her groups, hasn't she? So if Max has the same number of apples in each group, we call that equal groups. Max has equal groups because he has the same number of apples in each of his groups. But Lucia had a different number of apples in each of her groups. So Lucia's groups are unequal because there are a different number of apples in each group. So we use the word equal in our groups to describe when the apples, there is the same number of apples in each group and they are unequal if there is a different number of apples in each group. Adam and Lucy each have some footballs and each of them has put their footballs into two groups. What do you notice about Adam's and Lucy's footballs? What's the same and what's different? Press pause on the video and have a little think. What did you notice about the footballs in Adam's group? And what did you notice about the footballs in Lucy's groups? They've both got two groups, haven't they? Let's look at Adam's groups. What do you notice? Does Adam have the same or different number of footballs in each of his groups? That's right, excellent. He has a different number of footballs in each of his groups. And I can see that because of how they're lined up. I can see that he's got more footballs in one group than the other. Can you remember the word that we just learnt that describes when there are a different number of footballs in each group? Excellent. Unequal. Adam's groups are unequal because there are a different number of footballs in each group. Let's look at Lucy's footballs. Does Lucy have the same or a different number of footballs in each of her groups? Excellent. Lucy has the same number of footballs in each of her groups, doesn't she? And we can see that because of how they're lined up. Can you remember the word that we can use to describe the groups when there is the same number of the object in each of them? Fantastic. Equal. So Lucy has equal groups because she has the same number of footballs in each of her groups. Fantastic. Samira and Charlie have some cupcakes and the cupcakes have been grouped. Can you see the groups of cupcakes? 
Excellent. What do you notice about Samira's and Charlie's cupcakes? Press pause on the video and have a little think. What's the same and what's different? What did you notice about Samira's and Charlie's cupcakes? Yeah, they've both got three groups of cupcakes, haven't they? Fantastic. Let's look at Samira's groups. What do you notice about Samira's groups? Does Samira have the same number of cupcakes in each of her groups or does she have a different number of cupcakes in each of her groups? Fantastic. She has a different number of cupcakes in each of her groups, doesn't she? You can see that one of her groups hasn't got as many as the other groups. Can you remember the word that describes our groups if there is a different number in each of them? Fantastic. It is unequal. So Samira has unequal groups because she has a different number of cupcakes in each of her groups. What about Charlie? Have a look at Charlie's cupcakes. Does Charlie have the same or a different number of cupcakes in each of his groups? Fantastic. Charlie has the same number of cupcakes in each of his groups. Can you remember the word that describes our groups if there is the same number in each of them? Super equal. So Charlie has equal groups because there is the same number of cupcakes in each of them. Fantastic. For your practice activity today, I would like you to explore equal and unequal groups. And to do this, you're going to need some identical objects. So you could either draw some identical objects, you might get some identical objects like that we had before earlier on in the lesson, or you could even make your own stamper to make pictures with identical objects on them. So I've shown you here how you can make a potato stamper. You get a potato, slice off the top, push your cookie cutter into it, and then cut off that potato around it, and then dip it in some paint and stamp it on lots of different um, pieces of paper. You can make as many pictures as you want. Or if you don't have any potatoes, you can get some cardboard, create a picture, I've done a little picture of a fish there, and stick another piece of cardboard onto the back of it so that you can use it as a stamper, dip it in some paint, and again, print it on different uh, on, onto a piece of paper. Then what you'll need to do is you'll need to put your objects into groups, just like we did earlier on in the lesson. Now, are your groups equal or unequal? You could go around the house and quiz people in, in there. You can ask them, are my groups equal or are they unequal? Can they spot the equal groups? Can they spot the unequal groups? Bring those to the next lesson and I will show you mine as well. Remember, we've learned today that equal groups have the same number of objects in them and unequal groups have a different number of objects in them. I hope you have a lovely time um, practicing um, and exploring equal and unequal groups. For next time, please could you bring with you four plates and some identical objects. You'll need to have at least 12 identical objects. It might be some bricks, it might be some pasta, um, maybe some cutlery, pencils, um, doesn't matter what they are, but they just need to be identical please, 12 of them. Um, you have done some amazing mathematics today, well done, and I hope you have fun exploring equal and unequal groups in your practice activity. See you next time. Bye.